Welcome to this third session of Caring for the Caregiver. My name is Bob Makovic. I'm a hospice chaplain and it's good to be able to share this time together. This week we'll talk about stress and burnout and caring for yourself as a caregiver. But before we get started, I want to start with answering a question that was raised uh, out of last week's session. And that had to do with, and I hope I got the question correct, how can I prepare my future caregivers uh, for, so that the issues that they may face aren't so complicated? And there's a checklist that's been developed American Bar Association, American Medical Association uh, put together a resource checklist for my family. I highly recommend it. But basically the questions deal with the what, where, who, how, when. And I put together, adapted that checklist from that resource and uh, deals with issues like financial, banking, checking, savings accounts, safety deposit boxes, insurance, real estate, medical and final wishes, wills, trusts, power of attorney, any other assets or, or debts, personal and family history. Answering those kinds of questions can be very, very helpful for future caregivers. And again, I put together a little checklist taken from uh, the book Checklist for My Family, A Guide to My History, Financial Plans, and Final Wishes. So, ready for a quiz? <laughs> so you may be a caregiver if at some point in the last week you've had trouble keeping your mind on what you were doing, being focused, concentrating. You may be a caregiver if you felt as though you couldn't leave your loved one alone. You may be a caregiver if you've had difficulty in making everyday decisions. You may be a caregiver if you have felt useful and needed you may be a caregiver if you have felt lonely. You may be a caregiver if you have felt upset that your loved one has changed so much from the way they used to be. You may be a caregiver if you felt a loss of privacy and or personal time. You may be a caregiver if you've had some sleep disturbance because of caring for your loved one. You may be a caregiver if you've had spells of deep sadness, even crying uncontrollably. You may be a caregiver if you have felt the strain of trying to balance work, family, and caring for your loved one. You may be a caregiver if you've had back pain. You may be a caregiver if you've been satisfied with the help and the support for family and others and caring for your loved one. You may be a caregiver if you, have, if you have felt your loved one's situation to be an inconvenient or a barrier to care. Or maybe try these questions. On a scale of one to 10, one being very stressful, uh, let me flip it, one being not stressful, and being extremely stressful. How's your stress been lately? On a scale of one to 10, one being very healthy, 10 being very ill. How's your health been now compared to a year ago? These are questions that come from a questionnaire from the AMA. And there are other similar questionnaires. American Psychological Association has put out a similar one as well. Or you may be a caregiver if somehow the image of a candle burning at both ends 
has come into your mind lately. Although it may seem counterintuitive, it may not make any sense when you're call, caught in the midst of caring for another person. Caring for yourself can be and in fact is one of the most important things you can do as a caregiver. Perhaps you've heard it said or said it yourself. Mom or dad or whomever needs me. Oh, I can't worry about that right now. I'll have time for that later. Let's be honest, the role and the responsibilities of being a caregiver is stressful. It can mean trying to handle several things at the same time as if there isn't enough already in your life. The stress of, care, of caregiving can lead to irritability, isolation, depression, and more, including physical illness. Here are some of the causes of stress and potential burnout. And burnout is the result of intensive giving of oneself to the neglect of one's own personal, emotional, physical, spiritual health. Some of the causes include conflicting demands, trying to balance the needs of the care recipient, and others can, uh, others can be left behind if not in fact neglected. Loss of control. As human beings we often feel the need to be in control and when that sense of control gets disrupted stress and anxiety starts to increase. So let me ask, how's your stress level been since the pandemic hit a year ago? We know it well. Another cause of stress is the lack of privacy. Simply because of the, the demands of caregiving try, and trying to balance everything else in your life can leave you with little if any time to be alone so you can renew yourself. One of the causes of stress can be a sense of role confusion. Trying to separate your caregiving roles and responsibilities can be difficult, if not impossible at best. Some of the causes of stress can be unreasonable demands placed on you as a caregiver by either the care receiver or others in your life or even yourself. And finally, some of the, one of the causes of stress can be unrealistic expectations again, either coming from the care receiver or others, or expectations you place on yourself. Feeling you should be all things and be able to handle all things to all people, which can lead to a feeling of guilt. We'll talk about that. Some of the emotional mind fields in the caregiving. I just mentioned one, sense of guilt. Dealing with expectations you place on yourself or others place on you. Dealing with the shouldas, wouldas, couldas, and all of those. No doubt there are times when guilt can be appropriate. But we are folks, I believe, who perhaps all too easily can put ourselves on a guilt trip. Another minefield is a sense of helplessness and worry, feeling overwhelmed, underprepared, even inadequate to the task of caregiving. Another emotional minefield is resentment and anger, which can be directed toward your care receiver, and that's very common. Depression can be another one. Grief is another one. And in caregiving, there is an added dimension of grief, what folks are now saying 
calling anticipatory grief. That life that once was is never going to be the same again. From the Alzheimer's Association, signs of high level stress and even burnout, they list some of these re 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 repeats. Anger or frustration towards your care receiver, the one you're caring for, or others. Anxiety, depression, exhaustion, health problems, inability to concentrate even on normal activities, sleeplessness, social withdrawal. Let me talk about some keys to caring for yourself. Most importantly, remember that caring for yourself is as important as caring for someone else. Perhaps you've flown on an airplane, and at some point early in the flight, that wonderful person stands up in a uniform and gives that speech that nobody listens to, let's be honest, and instructs you to read that card that's in, in the uh, pocket in front of you. And at one point, what do they say? In the event of oxygen, oxygen will drop. And if you are sitting with your children, what are you supposed to do? Put it on yourself and then care for your child or the one you're traveling with. It's a wonderful imagery. And in fact, I, the, one of the books that's available now, and I don't have the resource um, on caregiving, but that image of putting the mask on yourself and then caring for your child is the cover image of, of that book. Now, I've never been in that situation, fortunately, but I also can't imagine my first instinct would be, I need to care for the other person. I'll take care of myself later. That's not what you're instructed to do. The Family Caregiving Alliance says, uh, has some keys to caring for yourself and they call it the IRS of caregiving. No, it's not the federal government. Mm -hmm. The IRS stands for first information. Some of that is uh, covered in that checklist that we talked about at the beginning of the session here. But here is when at the beginning of caregiving you feel, often feel, least informed about what's needed, what's expected, what's going on. You feel insecure, uncertain. Uh, the, the image of Abbott Costello, who's on first, what's on second, you know, you just lost. So part of the, the key there is to gather as much information as you can. If you're dealing with a loved one who has a disease, what's going on? What do you need to know about their disease process? Any medications, that kind of stuff. What are the skills that you may need in caring for your loved one? And where can you get trained to learn those tasks? How does the disease process and, and, uh, and as it goes along, how will it affect their ability to care for themselves or not? What are the physical limitations that your loved one has now or will have? Especially in uh, caring for those with dementia or other cognitive impairments, what are the changes <coughs> cognitively that you can expect? Do you, or if your family member has your care receiver, your loved one, given you permission to get medical information? That's a key. You might not be aware of community caregiving resources, but they are, they are there to help you. Um, home Meals on Wheels, home delivered meals, daycare programs, transportation, and the like. 
and some of the resource, some of the websites that I cited on the resource page in that first session uh, have links to help you make some of those connections. Information. The second R, respite. Caregiving is often a 24-7 job and everyone needs a break sometimes. Getting away can give you perspective and remind you that there is a world outside, and I would add, and a soul inside you. Taking a break can give you a chance to connect with others, share a laugh, catch up, renew yourself. But, but it can be also as simple as reading a book. I'll make some suggestions in a bit about that. But at first, it may not feel easy to take a break. There may be some internal reluctance to leave your loved one. There may be some fear about uh, that something will happen. What if something happens while I'm away? Do you hear the guilt trip there? Um, and if someone's caring for them while you're not there, will they do it correctly? But remember, you must care for yourself. And the S is for support. You're not the Lone Ranger. You can't do it alone. And like respite, getting support for your caregiving situation will help you take better care of yourself. The longer you are a caregiver, the more isolated you can become. How many times do you say to folks, well, I just can't get together now, maybe later, and then they stop calling. But we all need someone to connect with. There are caregiver support groups in the community and again, even through the internet to help you reduce the feeling that you're alone. So don't be afraid to ask for help. About 50% of all caregivers get no outside help at all. And when someone asks if, there any, if there's anything they can do for help, most of us usually say, oh no, that's okay. We're doing just fine. Call me. Let me know what I can do to help. Which is a generous offer but often caregivers don't call because of the feeling. I can handle it myself. I've got it under control. So let me make some suggestions about ways to deal with caregiver stress. And I realize that some of these, if not all of them, fall in yet in the category of easier said than done. But I would also suggest they are essential to your health and well-being. First, take care of yourself physically. Be sure to eat a well-balanced diet. Reduce your caffeine intake. I was one for years that I knew I was under stress when I was drinking three pots of coffee a day. <laughs> I was fine. <laughs> Don't give in to stress-driven urges like sweets or too much alcohol. Be sure to get enough sleep. Find time to exercise, even if it's only a walk around the park. Now those are common sense things that folks tell you every day to do. But as caregivers, we often forget those things. And I'll get to it later. Connect with friends. 
talk with someone outside of your situation helps avoid the feeling of isolation. Know your limitations. When necessary, ask for help. Don't be too proud to think you can do it all by yourself. Make a list, a list of what you need to do and see if there's others that can help with some of those things. Give yourself permission to deal with your emotions. It's okay. It's okay to feel guilty, even angry. Give yourself permission to have a good cry. And keep, perhaps even keep, a personal journal. Just an opportunity to let some of what's going on inside, not necessarily a diary that you feel compelled to write every day, but on occasion a journal. Where are you at? How are you feeling? Call on community resources. See what others can do to help. What are the community resources available? How do you make the necessary arrangements to take care of those resources? I mentioned this already. Take a break. Physically. Walk, literally walk away from the situation, even for a brief time. Here's a huge one. Forgive yourself for not being perfect. It may entail asking others to forgive you. One way to deal with caregiver stress is listen to relaxing music. Learn some relaxing techniques. Try some meditation. Try even simply at some point taking three deep breaths. Just inhale, let it sit there, and exhale. One way to deal with the stress is to avoid noisy or tension-filled TV late at night. That way you don't get your mind rolling and you have a better chance of sleeping. Get organized. I mentioned this already. Simple tools like a calendar or things to do. Those kind of make a list. Learn to say no. Realize that you can't do everything and be everything to all people. Set limits on yourself. Find a support group or supportive friends. There's lots of groups, even online groups. Um, here's one I love and quite frankly, in one of the lists was listed as the first thing. You ready? <laughs> Laugh about something every day. And here's the last one. Give yourself a treat every once in a while. Perhaps even an ice cream cone. <laughs> ready for a trip to Mally's? These are but some suggestions in dealing with your stress. So let me close this time with a devotional thought from Joan Gunzelman's book, 124 Prayers for, Prayer for Caregivers.
This devotion is taken from Psalm 34, verse 18. God embraces the brokenhearted and lifts up those whose spirits are crushed. And she writes, sometimes as caregivers, our work breaks our heart. We are close to the pain, sadness, and grief that folks deal with. We are immediately connected with those with whom we care. We find ourselves drawn into their distress, their pain. Our sense of helplessness and suffering with them can be great. But despite the hurt, we wouldn't have it any other way. Our presence and love with them is a blessing to them and to us both. Will you join with me in prayer? Loving God, others' suffering and sadness feel like my own. My heart bleeds with those who suffer. May my willingness to be with others be a consolation to them as they make their journey. Thank you for the great privilege of, our, of participating so intimately with the lives of those we care for. Mend my heart, strengthen my hands. Heal my spirit. <laughs>